lives. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to the Kookley Bushcraft channel. Okay, so I've got this thing. I know, you want attention. I'm, I'm talking, do you mind? <laughs> okay, so this is part of my thousand subscribers giveaway. So this one is going to Ariella in uh, Australia. Uh, she's got a YouTube channel, she does videos on cooking and things, and yeah, so I thought I'd make her a ladle. Yeah, when I said this was going to be a prize, I wasn't going to, uh, I wasn't going to send it out like this. So this is a burr, or a burl. So, I think, if I split it down here, I should be able to get quite a nice ladle. And seeing as Ariella likes cooking, a ladle is probably quite, quite a nice idea. <sighs> okay, there we go. Right, so I'm going to saw that end off a little, and uh, then I'm going to remove some bark and see if we've got any bark incursions anywhere. The thing you always have to be careful of is every so often you have somewhere like this where there's a little indentation where you get bark growing into the wood, and then of course. Of course, it's not going to be watertight. So I'm using exactly the same method that I normally would use for making a coxer. But first I'm taking the bark off to see exactly what we've got under there. So where, where it joins the tree, we will have a little bit of a bark incursion there. But, it shouldn't be a very deep one, as you can see there. So, as if you're interested in learning about cooking and you want to uh, learn some new recipes, you're watching the wrong channel. <laughs> I'm an awful cook. Yeah, I'll leave a link to Ariella's channel in the description. I like to try and keep the shape quite natural, but uh, there was a little bit on the top here that really wasn't fitting in with me plans. So I've taken that off with the saw. So what I'm going to do now, and this is a great test for the tip of your knife, I'm going to dig in and I'm going to try and peel out peel out sections of wood like this It is quite handy to have a pair of pliers for doing this. And of course if any come too close to the edge, I can just cut them off. But you see the shape of the grain there. You know, it's all uh, it's all round. So as if I can just pull out little round sections. So this takes quite a long time, quite a painstaking pro process. 
but also because you're working entirely with the grain it gives a much stronger end product for anyone who's wondering uh, burr and burl it's basically English burr American English burl uh, so as if we look at this it's actually got quite a nice curve in the back where I've split it already so I really think with things like this it's uh, <laughs> a lot of it's about getting the right wood you know I mean sometimes you don't even know till you've got the bark off it just uh, just how good it's going to look but I think my first impressions of this piece of wood I think I think I've got quite lucky uh, I'll maybe try and accentuate that curve a little bit mm. yeah swirl going up the back so whenever you're carving from round wood you always want to get past the center past the past the pithy bit but I'll probably see if I can keep just a little bit of that coloration in the back. I think that looks quite nice. And a little bit of a curve like that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, look at it. There's no point trying to get it, trying to get it symmetrical, <laughs> you know. So as if I can keep a little bit of that swiggle, then uh, I think that'd be good. Uh, I've taken the bark off because that's a lot easier than doing anything else until it defrosts a little a little bit more which uh, it does feel like it's doing but yeah I'll put this in a plastic bag overnight that'll help to keep the moisture in it's a lot easier to carve as if it's fresh and moist as it dries out it becomes a nightmare uh, also, when wood dries out, it can split. Uh, but, yeah, you just don't want to dry it out too quickly. And, yeah, in general, it doesn't split. I've not had very many problems with spoons or coaxes splitting. But, uh, it does generally take me a while to carve them. And I keep them in a plastic bag which every so often I'll turn inside out that way it does it does dry a little bit more slowly and then when I get towards the end I'll just leave them outside of the bag and uh, yeah just don't leave them somewhere too warm Do those lights look weird in the background? Nah, I think that looks quite fancy. Yeah, that looks like I know what I'm doing with this uh, photography like. Okay, so I'm getting a bit bored of the hollowing out, so a bit of axe work. So, Kent pattern axe, nice old English axe. Very, very underrated. Great crafting tool. Uni, sharp things, go away. No, not now. Okay. Back at it again now, and I've got some pliers, and you can see I'm tearing out some pretty good chunks. We're getting there. It's been a lot of work so far. Okay, I'm using the little hook knife given to me by Alex uh, from Be Outdoors again. Great little tool. 
Uh, yeah, it's really good for rounding off edges. That's what I'm finding with this thing. This is where we're up to. As if I'm shipping this to Australia, I think I need to <laughs> remove quite a bit more material. It's still quite heavy. I'm trying to uh, stick to the natural shape of the grain as much as I can. I mean, I've added a little... Well, not added. I've not added anything. I'm just removing. But there's a little bit of a knobble on the end to give a bit of grip. Uh, but in general, the shape of the handle is the shape of the branch just just reduced. And I'm trying to stick to the actual grain of the wood. So I do a lot of woodworking with my job. And uh, it's usually nasty, noisy machinery and uh, cutting nice straight lines and yeah this is a much nicer way of going about things i think to me it's a lot more aesthetically pleasing uh, for chasing out these little bits around well around the edge of the burr where we've got bark incursions this little flexi cut carving jack's doing a really good job and uh yeah, I think it's I think it's coming along okay. This thing now should be at least finished enough for the sake of the video. So I said I was gonna follow the grain and not do anything too unnatural. I have carved a bit of a flat at the bottom, which means it can be stood up as if it's got a plate or something behind it to lean against. The handle is too long and too angled for it to stand up on its own. I've also carved a little bit of a hook in the back of it. Uh, as if you're clever with your spoon carving, uh, it wouldn't have worked with this, but you can find a branch and use that as a hook and put your bowl in the other end. It's something I've seen done, but with spoons, I do quite like to put a hook on the top of them. So, wait, that's quite a thick lip there, but yeah, that works. So what's left to do is obviously to oil it. I'm going to use Ballistol, which is a German oil used quite often for firearms, uh, but also it's good for wood, leather, it's quite a handy multi-purpose oil. Uh, I'm also going to sand it down. So people who make wooden spoons for a living, uh, they say you shouldn't need to sand them down. Uh, and on a microscopic level, you can get a much smoother surface with just a sharp knife. But you've just got to be really careful with tool marks and facets and... As if you want to check out Joe Wood's work, uh, she's the master of facets. She makes spoons and, yeah, there's like really, really neat, even knife strokes all the way around on some of them. It's a really quite impressive effect and one, one that I'm not going to be uh, skilled enough to copy any time in the near future. <laughs> but, yeah, I think this has turned out okay. So... As if you don't like things to be all straight and, and even. Uh, yeah, it's... I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comments. Right, so still some work left. Bit of sandpaper, especially on the inside. That needs to be smooth. And uh, the way I've been pulling the, uh, the strips out, it really isn't. Uh, the outside edge here... I don't think I'm going to sand that at all because it feels really nice and smooth. All I've done there is remove the bark. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that I think that surface really makes the whole thing, you know. I was intending on making some prizes for this giveaway, but before the 1,000 subscribers, I really didn't have time. Uh, the last... The last hundred came so quickly. Uh, but in the end, I've made a couple of things uh, after the actual draw. 
But uh, yeah, it's worked out quite nicely. And uh, this this ladle is taking a hell of a long time to make, uh, but it's really enjoyable work. Uh, the th one thing to bear in mind is if you do want to make something like this, when you're harvesting the burr, yeah, landowner's permission, and plus, you know, like, like when you're taking anything else from the natural world, you know, make sure you're going to use it. Don't ever take more than you need. Uh, it's very, very easy to remove a burr from a tree. And it takes a lot of time to actually make a coxer or a ladle with it. Uh, so don't take things that you're not going to use. Okay, so apart from that, thank you very much for watching. And uh, please like, share, subscribe. And I'll see you all again soon for another Kookley Bushcraft video. Bye for now. Uni, say goodbye. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, girly. Come on.